When we consider the factors that influence demand, there are six you should be familiar with. The first is the number of closed substitutes, and we're going to go through each of these in turn. Uh, the price of the product in relation to income, the cost of substituting between products, brand loyalty and habitual consumption, the degree of necessity and luxury, and finally, we'll close with time. The first example I'll give you is the example of butter and margarine. Now, some would consider them closed substitutes, which means that if the price of one goes up, people are more likely to buy the other. And since it's just between butter and margarine, I would say most people would have an elastic response or would have elastic demand for one or the other. And in the case where there are many more substitutes, demand becomes more elastic. Where there are less or fewer substitutes, demand becomes more inelastic because people don't have an alternative option. The second factor is the price of the product in relation to income. And frequently I give the example of salt in class because salt is very cheap. And most people wouldn't care if the price of salt went up because it makes up such a small proportion of their income. Let's say I make $5,000 a month, I might spend $2 on a pack of salt. If the price of salt goes up to $2.25, doesn't really matter to me because I'll buy it anyway. Reason being that $2.25 pack of salt might last me three months or four months. That 25 cents is relatively meaningless. So in relation to income, salt is very small, but if you look at a, an, a, an item that has much, takes up a much greater percentage of your income, like a car or a computer, people are much more sensitive to changes in price. I give this example because I currently teach at uh, Harrow International School of Beijing. To my students at this school, asking them to consider the cost of substituting between products. For example, if this alternative school, Keystone Academy, which is also an international school in Beijing, lowered their price, it doesn't necessarily mean students from my school will just go to Keystone. There's a significant cost of changing or switching between products. If you are leaving, or services as well, if you're leaving one school to change to go to another, you're going to First of all, hardly see any of those friends of yours that you made at the current school. Second, you have to adapt to a new system. Third, you meet new teachers. So there's a high cost of substituting, which is why students do not frequently change schooling, private schooling, based on cost. However, if you look at a much simpler product, like a soft drink, then switching between soft drinks has a minimal cost. And therefore, that will be more elastic. Right? People will be more responsive to a change in the price of a soft drink because it really doesn't impact their life too much to switch. Whereas schooling has a significant impact and there are a lot of costs associated with switching or substituting between. Brand loyalty and habitual consumption are also factors that influence elasticity of demand. Anything that's habit forming, we assume that the demand is going to be more inelastic. Like if you are a cigarette smoker and price of, uh, the price of cigarettes goes up, chances are you're still going to buy that pack of cigarettes. Now, there might be a few people who don't buy, but we're going to assume here that for the most part, people will continue to buy cigarettes because they're addicted and there is a habit there. The stronger a product's brand loyalty is, the more it would have inelastic demand. And if you think about Apple products in this way, people are very loyal. Therefore, Apple can increase prices on their products or release expensive products and people are not very sensitive to the price because they are loyal to the brand. Now, if you have low levels of brand loyalty, you have less control over price because people will quickly respond to an increase in your price by switching to somebody else. So brand loyalty and habitual consumption would end up in a product having more inelastic demand if there are high levels of brand loyalty and consumption is habit forming.
There's also the degree of necessity and luxury. If an item is an absolute necessity, like a life-saving medicine, then demand for it is more inelastic. However, if the item is a luxury item, like this yacht or this cruise ship, uh, I, I think this is a yacht, then if you're looking at the demand for yachts, they're seen as more of a luxury item. Therefore, buyers of those items will be potentially more sensitive to a change in price. You might argue back here saying, well, rich people don't care. Uh, that's a discussion for a different day. But let's say for the most part, people will respond more to changes in the price of luxury goods than they would change their demand or the quantity demanded in response to a change in price of a necessity. And finally, we're going to close with time. Now, the more time you have or the more time we're looking at, then we argue that in the long run, demand is more elastic than it is in the short run. And a, an example will illustrate this. If you think about a car that needs a new tire, you have to think about how the owner finds out about the car needing a new tire. We could look at two situations. First, you're driving down the road and suddenly you have a flat tire and you have to replace it. Chances are you will go to the first place and change a tire no matter how expensive it is, right? You're not very responsive to the price because you need that product immediately. However, if you know you're going to have to change your tire within the next three months, then you are much more sensitive to price and you have the ability to wait. So in the longer term, people develop more elastic demand. Another way to think about this is that demand for cigarettes in the short run might be considered inelastic, but if prices continue to go up, it might actually force some people to quit in the long run. So these are the factors you should know that affect price elasticity of demand and also consider their implications for business. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions, leave your comments or questions below. Email me at enhancedtuition at gmail.com and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again.